Hey, what is going on, Keep Users? Greg here from House Monkey Pod, and if you build campaigns and you use the decision diamond to set up rules and logic inside of your campaigns, then stick around because we have a, a little trick that should make that process just a bit easier for you here. So um, this uh, workaround we're going to showcase actually comes from a good friend of mine and longtime Keep expert, Mr. Scott Richens, one of the people on this planet I have learned the most from when it comes to building campaigns and using Keep in general. But um, the, the workaround here is uh, it's effectively creating an otherwise condition. So let's say you have a decision diamond that has four outcomes. You might have a rule for sequence one, a rule for sequence two, a rule for sequence three, and then anyone who doesn't meet the criteria for those first three sequences, you want to go into that fourth sequence. So um, the way that most people would solve this is they would build their first three rules, and then for that fourth sequence, they would sort of build the, the inverse, build the opposite condition, right? If they don't meet that other criteria, they wind up in that fourth catch-all sequence. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that going that route can get a little convoluted, especially when you have multi-part rules or when you have, you know, five or six or 10 or 15 potential outcomes and you need to create the opposite for all of those rule conditions as that, that otherwise um, outcome. So uh, what Scott has done is devised a workaround that simplifies the process of saying, you know what, if they don't meet any of the other criteria, pop them into this sequence here. So uh, if that interests you, if you have use cases where that would make your life easier, then stick around and I'll let Scott show you his method. Decision diamonds are cool and they suck. Specifically, the reason that I say they suck is whenever you've got logic, um, you gotta build the logic to go one route. And then if you if they don't qualify for that and you want them to go the other way, you gotta build the opposite of the logic. So if you take a look at my screen here, I think, yeah, this one. So if I've got a if I've got a simple one like this, where it's gonna go one of two directions, I can build out the logic, but then I would have to build out the reverse of the logic. And so I would say if it's not this tag and not this tag, and it's not this thing. When it's really like, no, I want them to go here, otherwise they go the other way. Um, I got tired of building out that logic, and, and especially when you're looking at something that's more complex like this, where it's like, hey, they got a reason to go here, or here, or here, or here, various tags will send them that direction. But then if they don't go one of those ways, I want them to go to the other one. And so what I would have to do on that, I've got this no criteria met up top here. So it's if they have this tag, they'll go down that path. Or if they have this tag, they go down that path. Or if they have this other tag, they go down this path. The one that's the fallback, um, I would have to build the reverse. It's not that tag or 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 that tag, then send them here. Um, and, and that got really annoying because there's this little thing down in here that could be really useful if I could just say, hey, here's my default fallback. Um, but it only pops up if you have a rule for everything. You can't just designate one as a default fallback. And so what I started doing is I started in all the apps that I'm working in, I started creating a tag that says no criteria met. And in fact, I set up like a little utility campaign. So if that tag ever does happen to get applied, which it shouldn't, but if it ever does, it triggers a goal that immediately removes it. Nobody should ever have that tag. So what I now do in pretty much every single one of my campaigns is I go the easy route. I build the inclusionary stuff. It's the exclusionary that gets weird. It's, you know, they don't have this tag and that tag and that tag. And you know, all of the exclusionary stuff to me is always a little more confusing than the inclusionary, which is, hey, they have these things. So on the other one, so I either say you have these and you go that direction, otherwise you go this direction. I create a rule that they will always fail. If the contacts tags contains that tag that they'll never have. So they'll always fail it. So they'll fail this and they'll fail this one. Therefore, this pops up and I say, send them down the fallback path. I use this everywhere. Literally, all of my decision diamonds, 
I want to make sure somebody goes somewhere. And if they don't, um, either they should go somewhere or I create a fallback sequence that hits a slack and sends them my direction. So I know that they didn't go somewhere. But in literally all of my campaigns, you know, this big crazy one that I had, we've got all that kind of stuff um, uh, already assigned. Great. Hey, these are all inclusionary things. And then there's the one that's the fallback. Hey, no criteria met. Oh, they have this tag. Well, they're not going to have that tag and they'll fail everything else. So therefore, I send them down that particular path with, with the option out bottom. This has totally changed the way that I do decision diamonds. Like I said, um, it's allowed me to avoid doing the exclusionary stuff entirely. It's allowed me to set up things where there's always a default path that they go down. Because like I said, the, the, the option out at the bottom only ever pops up if you have rules on everything. But what if I just want them to always go down one? So that's, that's what I've created. Um, and it's made things much nicer working with decision diamonds. It avoids a lot of complexity. So anyway, that's new. If that's novel to you, awesome. Okay, so as you just saw, Scott recommends setting up a tag that basically no one should ever have. And you can use that as the criteria. And simply by setting up a rule for that sequence, it unlocks that extra criteria where you can define if they don't meet the criteria for any of these, put them into, and you can choose the, the fourth sequence or the, the alternate sequence there, right? Um, and I love that method. Uh, the only drawback I can think of is that it does create a potential um, tag that you would then have to use automation to make sure that nobody ever had. So another way of handling that would be to create a rule for that sequence that um, contradicts itself that nobody would ever meet. So say they do have tag A and they don't have tag A, right? Something like that so that it's automatically null and that would effectively give you the same option to define a catch-all for people who don't meet the criteria. So uh, it's doing the same thing Scott has suggested here just without the, um, the, the complexity of having the sequence that automatically removes the tag if it's ever inadvertently applied. So uh, a couple of options there for you, but hopefully what you take away from this video is that you can simplify the process of creating that otherwise condition um, and therefore streamline any of your decision diamonds that, that needed that type of configuration. So uh, if you found this useful, please feel free to leave a comment. If you have any questions, drop them below. Or if you know somebody that this uh, workaround can serve, feel free to share the video with them directly. Thanks for watching. Take care.